Greetings, dear students. Prepare yourselves for an educational and enjoyable adventure in this video. Today, we'll delve into the captivating subject of general principles, crimes in general under the criminal code of the Philippines. Please keep your safety in mind, and may you always be blessed by the divine. Welcome to the Teacher Lumaban YouTube channel. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37 verse 5 What is the primary requirement for conduct to be punishable as a crime according to section 6? Letter A Intentional Conduct Letter B Negligent Conduct Letter C Unintentional Conduct Letter D Careless Conduct When can a minor aged 13 but less than 18 years old be tried as an adult for a crime? Letter A always. Letter B. Only for serious crimes. Letter C. Never. Letter D. Only with parental consent. Which section of the code deals with the concept of insanity as a defense to criminal responsibility? Letter A Section 10 Letter B Section 11 Letter C Section 12 Letter D Section 13 What is self-defense, as defined in section 12? Letter A. Any action taken to harm an attacker. Letter B. Any action taken in response to an illegal attack. Letter C. Any action taken to provoke an attacker. Letter D. Any action taken to protect property. Under what circumstances does a person not incur criminal responsibility for causing injury or damage while performing a lawful act, as per section 13? Letter A always. Letter B. Only when the act is performed with due care. Letter C. Only when the act is performed recklessly. Letter D. Only when the act is performed with intent to harm. Please compare your selected answers with the answers listed in the answer key provided. If your chosen answer matches the one in the answer key, mark it as correct. After reviewing all the questions and answers, calculate your final score based on the number of correct answers. Point 3. How did you score? Did you achieve a high score? If yes, congratulations on a job well done. If not, don't worry. 
we will help you deepen your understanding through this video. Section 5. Crime and Punishment A crime is conduct defined and penalized under this code or special penal laws. Section 5. Krimen at Parusa Ang isang krimen ay tinukoy at pinarurusahan sa ilalim ng kodigong ito o mga espesyal na batas ng penal. Section 6. Intent and Negligence Only intentional conduct is punishable. Negligent conduct is punishable only when specifically provided under this code or other laws. Section 6. Layunin at kapabayaan. Ang sinadyang pag-uugali lamang ang mapaparusahan. Ang kapabayaan na pag-uugali ay mapaparusahan lamang kapag partikular na ibinigay sa ilalim ng kodigong ito o iba pang mga batas. Section 7. Acts and Crimes. When a single act produces two or more crimes under this code and other laws, or when a series of different acts on one occasion produce two or more crimes, or when a crime is a necessary means for committing another crime, the accused shall be charged in one indictment for all the crimes but may be convicted only for the crime proved with the highest penalty. The other crimes proved shall be considered as modifying circumstances. Section 7. Mga Gawa at Krimen Kapag ang isang gawa ay nagbunga ng dalawa o higit pang mga krimen sa ilalim ng kodigong ito at iba pang mga batas, o kapag ang isang serye ng magkakaibang mga aksyon sa isang pagkakataon ay nagbunga ng dalawa o higit pang mga krimen, o kapag ang isang krimen ay isang kinakailangang paraan para sa paggawa ng isa pang krimen, ang akusado ay kakasuhan. Sa isang sakdal para sa lahat ng mga krimen ngunit maaaring mahatulan lamang para sa krimen na napatunayang may pinakamataas na parusa. Ang iba pang mga krimen na napatunayan ay dapat ituring bilang pagbabago ng mga pangyayari. Section 8. Acts and Victims Series of similar acts on the same occasion against one victim shall be charged as one crime. If there is more than one victim, the respondent shall be charged with as many crimes as there are victims. Section 8. Mga Kilos at Biktima Ang mga serye ng mga katulad na kilo sa parehong okasyon laban sa isang biktima ay kakasuhan bilang isang krimen. Kung mayroong higit sa isang biktima, ang respondent ay kakasuhan ng kasing dami ng mga krimen na mayroong mga biktima. Section 9. Acts and Effects The offender shall be responsible for all the effects arising from the commission of illegal acts. Section 7. Mga kilo at Epekto Ang nagkasala ay dapat na responsable para sa lahat ng mga epekto na nagmumula sa paggawa ng mga ilegal na gawain. Section 10. Minority. A minor under 13 years do not incur criminal responsibility. A minor is a person under 18 years of age or those over 18 years of age but are unable to fully take care or protect themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation or discrimination because of a physical or mental disability or condition. A minor aged labing tatlong but less than 18 years old who commits a crime shall be subjected to the appropriate proceedings, and if charged with a crime punishable by penalty above level 4 shall be tried as an adult and, if convicted, liable to the penalty of imprisonment. Section 10. Minoria. Ang isang menor de edad na wala pang labing tatlong taong gulang ay hindi magkakaroon ng kriminal na pananagutan. Ang menor de edad ay isang taong wala pang labing walong taong gulang o higit sa labing walong taong gulang ngunit hindi kayang ganap na pangalagaan o protektahan ang kanilang sarili mula sa pang-aabuso, kapabayaan, kalupitan. Pagsasamantala o diskriminasyon dahil sa isang pisikal o mental na kapansanan o kondisyon. Ang isang menor de edad na labing tatlo ngunit wala pang labing walong taong gulang na nakagawa ng krimen ay isa sa ilalim sa naangkop ng mga paglilitis at kung sinampahan ng krimen na may parusang mas mataas sa antas apat na ay lilitisin bilang isang nasa hustong gulang at kung napatunayang nagkasala. Mananagot sa parusa ng pagkakulong. Section 11. Insanity. An insane person does not incur criminal responsibility. Insanity is the total deprivation of the mental ability to appreciate the criminality of one's conduct. Section 11. Pagkabaliw. Ang isang baliw na tao ay hindi nagkakaroon ng kriminal na pananagutan. Ang pagkabaliw ay ang kabuoang kawala ng kakayahang pangkaisipan na pahalagahan ng kriminalidad ng pag-uugali ng isang tao. Section 12. Self-defense. A person acting in self-defense or in defense of another does not incur criminal responsibility. Self-defense is the proportionate action done in response to actual illegal attack. Section 12. Pagtatanggol sa sarili. Ang isang taong kumikilo sa pagtatanggol sa sarili o sa pagtatanggol sa iba ay hindi nagkakaroon ng kriminal na pananagutan. Ang pagtatanggol sa sarili ay ang proportional na aksyon na ginawa bilang tugon sa aktual na ilegal na pag-atake. Section 13. Lawful Act. 
A person who, while performing a lawful act with due care, causes an injury or damage does not incur criminal responsibility. Section 13. Batas sa Batas Ang isang tao na, habang nagsasagawa ng isang legal na pagkilos ng may kaukulang pangangalaga, ay nagdudulot ng pinsala o pinsala ay hindi mananagot ng kriminal na pananagutan. Section 14. Lawful Order or Authority A person acting under lawful order or authority unless such order or authority is clearly not for a lawful purpose does not incur criminal responsibility. Section 14. Naaayon sa batas na kautusan o autoridad Ang isang taong kumikilo sa ilalim ng legal na kautusan o autoridad maliban kung ang nasabing kautusan o autoridad ay malino na hindi para sa isang legal na layunin ay hindi magkakaroon ng kriminal na pananagutan. Section 15. Compulsion A person compelled to act by reason of fear, intimidation, force, threat or some lawful cause does not incur criminal responsibility. Section 15. Pagpipilit Ang isang taong napilitang kumilos dahil sa takot, pananakot, pwersa, pagbabanta o ilang legal na dahilan ay hindi magkakaroon ng kriminal na pananagutan. Section 16. Imminent Harm A person who, acting to avoid an imminent harm, causes injury or damage does not incur criminal responsibility. Section 16. Napipintong Pinsala Ang isang tao na, kumikilos upang maiwasan ng isang napipintong pinsala, nagdudulot ng pinsala o pinsala ay hindi nagkakaroon ng kriminal na pananagutan. Section 17. Persons Responsible A person committing a crime is either a principal or an accessory. Section 17. Mga taong responsable Ang isang taong gumawa ng krimen ay alinman sa isang principal o isang accessory. Isa. Principles are persons who commit a crime personally or through another. Persons who agreed to commit a crime and commit it, regardless of the nature or extent of participation, shall be punished as principles. Ang mga principal ay mga taong gumawa ng krimen ng personal o sa pamamagitan ng iba. Ang mga taong sumang-ayon na gumawa ng krimen at gawin ito, anuman ang uri o lawak ng pakikilahok, ay dapat parusahan bilang mga principal. Dalawa. Accessories are persons who aid, abet or assist a principal. Ang mga accessory ay mga taong tumulong, nakikinabang o tumulong sa isang principal. Section 18. Attempt. An attempt to commit a crime shall be punishable only when provided by this code or other special penal laws. Section 18. Pagtatangka. Ang pagtatangkang gumawa ng krimen ay mapaparusahan lamang kapag ibinigay ng kodigong ito o iba pang mga espesyal na batas ng penal. Section 19. Modifying Circumstances The two kinds of modifying circumstances are aggravating circumstances and mitigating circumstances. Section 19. Pagbabago ng mga pangyayari Ang dalawang uri ng pagbabago ng mga pangyayari ay nagpapalubhan ng mga pangyayari at nagpapagaan ng mga pangyayari. Isa. An aggravating circumstance results in the imposition of the penalty in the higher range due to the presence of particular circumstances manifesting a greater criminal perversity of the accused as shown in the brutal and excessive manner or method which was consciously adopted to facilitate the commission of the crime. Or the taking advantage of physical or mental disability or age to ensure impunity, or the flagrant disregard of the accused of special personal conditions of the victim, and other analogous circumstances. Ang isang nagpapalubha na pangyayari ay nagre-resulta sa pagpapataw ng parusa sa mas mataas na saklaw dahil sa pagkakaroon ng mga partikular na pangyayari na nagpapakita ng mas malaking kriminal na kabuktutan ng akusado gaya ng ipinakita sa brutal at labis na paraan o pamamaraan na sinasadyang pinagtibay upang mapadali ang paggawa ng ang krimen. O ang pagsasamantala sa physical o mental na kapansanan o edad upang matiyak na hindi mapaparusahan, o ang tahasang pagwawalang bahala ng akusado ng mga espesyal na personal na kondisyon ng biktima, at iba pang kahalintulad ng mga pangyayari. Dalawa, a mitigating circumstance results in the imposition of the penalty in the lower range due to the presence of particular circumstances manifesting a lesser criminal perversity of the accused, or showing that he has a mental disability, or has acted under a diminished exercise of freedom of action, intelligence, or intent. Or is suffering from a physical or mental defect that restricts his means of action, defense or communication, or due to the fact that the resulting injury is greater than what was intended, and other analogous circumstances. 
Ang isang nagpapagaan na pangyayari ay nagre-resulta sa pagpapataw ng parusa sa mas mababang hanay dahil sa pagkakaroon ng mga partikular na pangyayari na nagpapakita ng mas mababang kriminal na kabuktutan ng akusado, o pagpapakita na siya ay may kapansanan sa pag-iisip, o kumilo sa ilalim ng pinaliit na paggamit ng kalayaan sa pagkilos, katalinuhan, o layunin. O nagdurusa sa isang physical o mental na depekto na naghihigpit sa kanyang paraan ng pagkilos, pagtatanggol o komunikasyon, o dahil sa katotohanan na ang nagresultang pinsala ay mas malaki kaysa sa nilayon at iba pang kahalintulad ng mga pangyayari. Mental disability is any mental illness, medical condition or defect substantially decreasing the ability to appreciate the criminality of one's conduct. Ang kapansanan sa pag-iisip ay anumang sakit sa pag-iisip, kondisyong medikal o depekto na makabuluhang bumababa sa kakayahang pahalagahan ng kriminalidad ng pag-uugali ng isang tao. A mitigating circumstance may also be appreciated in the accused's favor if he voluntarily surrenders to the police authorities or he voluntarily pleads guilty before the presentation of the prosecution's evidence in the criminal case filed against him. Ang isang nagpapagaan na pangyayari ay maaari ding pahalagahan sa pabor ng akusado kung siya ay kusang sumuko sa mga autoridad ng pulisya o siya ay voluntaryong umami ng kasalanan bago ang pagharap ng ebidensya ng prosekusyon sa kasong kriminal na isinampa laban sa kanya. Tatlo, the court shall consider the established facts in the appreciation of the modifying circumstances. Dapat isaalang-alang ng hukuman ang mga naitatag na katotohanan sa pagpapahalaga sa pagbabago ng mga pangyayari. In which situation does a person not incur criminal responsibility when acting under lawful order or authority, according to Section 14? Letter A Always. Letter B. Only when the order or authority is for a lawful purpose. Letter C. Only when the order or authority is not clearly for a lawful purpose. Letter D. Only when the order or authority is given by a superior. What must be the reason for a person to not incur criminal responsibility due to compulsion, as mentioned in Section 15? Letter A. Fear, intimidation, force, or threat. Letter B. Personal choice. Letter C. Peer pressure. Letter D. Financial gain. Under what circumstances can a person avoid criminal responsibility when causing injury or damage in order to prevent imminent harm, according to Section 16? Letter A. Always. Letter B. Only when the harm is not imminent. Letter C. Only when the harm is intentional. Letter D. Only when the harm is severe. What are the two categories of modifying circumstances mentioned in Section 19? Letter A. Guilt and Innocence. Letter B. Aggravating and Mitigating Circumstances. Letter C. Intentional and Unintentional Circumstances. Letter D. Criminal and Civil Circumstances. What type of circumstances leads to the imposition of a higher penalty range, as described in Section 19? Letter A. Mitigating circumstances. Letter B. Excessive remorse. 
Letter C Aggravating Circumstances Letter D Special Personal Conditions of the Victim When may a mitigating circumstance be considered in favor of the accused, according to section 19? Letter A always. Letter B. Only if the accused is mentally ill. Letter C. Only if the accused voluntarily surrenders. Letter D. Only if the accused pleads guilty before trial. What is the definition of mental disability, as per the provided information? Letter A. Any mental illness or medical condition. Letter B. Any medical condition or defect. Letter C. Any condition affecting one's intelligence. Letter D. Any defect in physical ability. How does Section 17 classify a person committing a crime? Letter A. As a principal or a bystander. Letter B. As a principal or an accessory. Letter C. As an offender or a witness. Letter D. As a victim or an accomplice. What is necessary for an attempt to commit a crime to be punishable, as stated in Section 18? Letter A. The completion of the crime. Letter B. The presence of witnesses. Letter C. The intention to commit the crime. Letter D. The specific provision in the law. How does Section 7 recommend handling multiple crimes arising from a single act or a series of different acts? Letter A. Each crime should have a separate indictment. Letter B. The accused can only be charged for one of the crimes. Letter C. All crimes should be charged in one indictment. Letter D. The victim can choose which crime to charge the accused with. Please compare your selected answers with the answers listed in the answer key provided. If your chosen answer matches the one in the answer key, mark it as correct. After reviewing all the questions and answers, calculate your final score based on the number of correct answers. Point 3. How did you score? Did you achieve a high score? If so, 
congratulations on a job well done. If not, don't worry. You can review this video to further enhance your understanding of the topic. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13 I hope you found our teacher Lumaban's self-learning video enjoyable and informative. If you gained new knowledge from this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to share it with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. We value your feedback. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We hope to see you again in our next video. May God bless you always. Welcome to the Teacher Lumaban YouTube channel.